Daryl Moose Johnson won three Super Bowls, Pete. He's laughing at the one that the Eagles won. He's got three. And he joins us now, the Fox analyst here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Moose, how you been? I'm good. I'm good. I'm not laughing. I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't know that I believe that a Cowboy could be happy that the Eagles won the Super Bowl. I think you're lying. <laughs> well, if the Patriots are about to win three and four years for the second time, uh, I'm thrilled that the Eagles have won their first Super Bowl. Um, I'd love to get your take after winning a couple of these things, three to be exact. What the off season's like? What's that you know next step for this team? That obviously they got a parade coming up. They're out uh, all over town. They're ringing the bell at the Sixers game tonight. The guys are at the casinos down here. The focus part of it is really interesting to me as to how that first one went for the Cowboys offseason. You had a bunch of interesting cats on that team, and, and how that those days and weeks after that Super Bowl go. Well, the one thing I would tell them is to enjoy it, and it sounds like they are right now. So I, I think that that's one of the things that, that maybe we didn't do a good enough job. Uh, we got right back into focusing on the next one. It didn't really take some time. To really enjoy it. So uh, I, I would definitely encourage uh, anybody uh, that's been a part of a team like that moving forward to to sit down and spend some time, take a trip with your teammates uh, and, and really celebrate what you've accomplished because it is very difficult. Um, you see the space between the opportunities that Philly had to play in the Super Bowl and, and, and how long that stretch can be. So uh, it, it it's not something that comes along frequently. Uh, you know, it's very fortunate the situation the Patriots are in. Uh, we were blessed to have made it three times in four years, but that's definitely not the norm. So um, I, I still feel that, uh, that that maybe our team kind of missed an opportunity to really kind of take in everything that we'd accomplish because every year is a little bit different. There's always some challenges. There's always some adversity, and you fight your way through it. And, you know, everything that Philly was able to over uh, overcome with the, the injury situation to some key places, especially Carson Wentz, you know, all the doubters going into the playoffs, uh, you know, not giving them – you know, any respect with uh, being underdogs on their own home field uh, in the divisional round of the championship game. So, you know, take some time away. You know, go enjoy that. Enjoy what you've accomplished. Um, you just mentioned, you know, how blessed the Patriots have been to be able to do this. Your uh, Cowboys teams had a great run. Um, do you look at this Eagles team and think they have the staying power or are they one of these one-year wonder types you know, that the NFC, or really, uh, yeah, the NFC, really, because the Patriots have kind of been, you know, the team in the AFC. But the NFC seems like it's been bouncing around. But do the Eagles have the staying power? I think so. I, I really do. Uh, you know, I, I thought the NFC was, it was different this year, right? We've got uh, five of the six teams in the playoffs are, are new teams. You know, Atlanta's the only holdover from last year. So that shows you the opportunity for change. But all those teams were, were very competitive. Um, you know, Minnesota, New Orleans, the Rams, the Eagles, uh, you know, that, that was a really, really good top tier group. Uh, you know, I thought the NFC was much stronger than the AFC this year. Uh, I thought that that was one of the reasons uh, why I was with pro Philadelphia going into the game. Uh, I really thought that they played a, a tougher schedule, uh, not only through the regular season, but, but test through the playoffs. So I thought that they were going to be more battle tested. Um, so yeah, I, I just think it's, uh, it, it's important. Uh, you know, for these guys to, to remain true to what they are. Uh, you know, they discovered some things. They grew during the course of the season. Uh, but I don't see any reason why Philadelphia would not be able to sustain this moving forward. Um, it, none whatsoever. So, uh, you know, un unless there's a situation, I mean, I don't think anybody saw Dallas taking a step back this year, but there's reasons why Dallas, you know, took a step backwards this year. And uh, as long as Philadelphia takes care of their business, I don't see why they wouldn't be right there again next year. Daryl Moose Johnson with us. Daryl, what did you think of the job that Doug Peterson did and some of the calls, including the one that we're talking about out here, that Philly call on the fourth and one? I mean, what kind of fortitude does it take to not only make that fourth and one call, but to go with the play call that they went with? Well, I, I don't know if that one was uh, as good as the fourth and one call in the fourth quarter with about five and a half minutes to go at his own 44-yard line. I, I, I thought that one was the one that took a ton of courage to do. Um, the one down at the goal line, you know, you, you see people go for it. You heard Doug Peterson say, you know, he wasn't going to get himself into a situation, um, you know, where he had marched all the way down the field, controlled the flow of the game, and settled for field goals. And and the big thing that he had to do going into this game was he had to stay aggressive for 60 minutes. Uh, <laughs> he was actually probably more aggressive than I anticipated he needed to be. So as good as that, that call was on fourth down at the goal line and as, as creative as that play was, uh, I thought the uh, the one on the final drive, um, 
you know, to get the touchdown to Zach Ertz, it w- was even more gutsy. Yeah, and one of our beat reporters that we had on yesterday said that Frank Reich told him that they knew if they didn't get that fourth and one, that play to Ertz, that they thought the game was over. So that's how critical they agree with you, Daryl, how, how critical that play was. Uh, uh, it seemed for the longest time, by the way, because Mike and I were talking about that uh, there was no defense in this game. Like both sides were uh, offensively kind of doing what they wanted to at will. And then finally, Brandon Graham steps up and knocks the ball loose. Uh, was that a critical play to you, and how important do you think that was in the outcome of the game? Oh, my gosh. It was, uh, you know, it was. there's a number of plays that you could say were the play of the game, and, and I think that that is definitely one of the ones that you would have to put there. Um, you, you know, I, I don't think anybody expected us to be at that stage of the game without a sack, without a turnover. Um, you know, I, I didn't think the offenses would be able to move the ball as they did against those two defenses, so... Um, yeah, that, that was a huge play, and, and it's the one thing that everybody talks about. You have to get pressure on Tom Brady. You have to make a move. You can't let him be comfortable in the pocket. And, uh, you know, they, they, had, they had some pressure around him, but they never had that big play. And exactly when they needed it the most, Brandon Graham stepped up and made it. Uh, Moose, when you look at, you know, the most difficult thing now is making decisions, and that's where Howie Roseman comes in, but – it's that fine line of making decisions that are smart for the team and those sentimental decisions. Like, this guy was a big part of this, but um, how difficult is that for these front offices now that are the Super Bowl champions and then the post-offseason trying to put a new team back together? Yeah, that's the hardest part. There, there, there will be change to the roster. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to part ways uh, with with people that you've won a championship with. So uh, you know those those will be tough decisions. Uh, but, but I've always felt that, that Philadelphia, back under uh, Andy Reid of that era, you know whether it was Hugh Douglas or Jeremiah Trotter, um, you know they, they were able to. It, probably the only one they missed was Brian Dawkins. You know Brian went out to Denver and, and played at a very high level for a couple more years, but they were willing to step away from from really key guys not only on the team but in the in the Philadelphia community. Uh, you know, to, to continue to move forward. And the great thing about the way they did that is there were no there were no hard feelings. There was no ill will. So Hugh Douglas came back. Jeremiah Trotter came back uh, after free agency didn't pan out. Uh, and we're back as Eagles. So uh, I've, I've, I've always thought that Philadelphia did a really good job looking forward, being anticipatory in their management and their roster structure. Uh, and, and probably the only other team that's, that's done as good a job or maybe even better has been New England. Uh, you know, they've kind of followed that same mantra. So it, this will be hard because you heard all the all the talk about how tight the locker room was, you know, how how, how much that gelled. And, um, you know, maybe one of the big reasons for the team being able to sustain the injuries, to do the things that they were able to do this year to win the championship. And when you hear that, you would think that that makes this even a more harder offseason to make some of those difficult decisions. We'll see what Howie has up his sleeve. Daryl Moose Johnston with uh, Fox, of course, uh, the Eagles. Uh, he's a three-time Super Bowl champion, once back-to-back, three and four years. The Eagles get there first. Uh, and it's good to catch up with you, Moose. <laughs> yeah, good catching up. Congratulations. Uh, keep celebrating. Enjoy the time.